Hi, it's Joe from Joe's Country Junction, and I am so glad that you're with me here in my sewing room today. We are still working on freeform quilting, and uh, we have worked through the alphabet. We have letters all the way A, and we've made it all the way to Z. You'll have to check out the previous videos to see some of those and how I made those letters, but we have all of the letters done now and I'm so excited about that because now we can move into more of the fun stuff. Uh, we'll be going back and we'll be doing another video on how to trim your letters and how to start putting them together. I've got a little sneak peek of that here for you. Um, and the reason why I'm showing this to you is because I wanna show you what we're gonna be doing next. Um, so you can see the letters, they're kind of wonky. Well, some are taller than the other and they kind of go up and down. You can see how the C is a little bit shorter and the D, you know, pops back up. But what I want you to really notice is in between, we have these flying geese sections. And I put flying geese sections all over in this quilt. I love the effect and the look of flying geese. Here's some here. Um, there's some in the border. Um, throughout the quilt, I use flying geese as spacers. So our goal today is to learn how to do flying geese, but we're going to expand that because for us, flying geese also end up being used to make star blocks. You need four flying geese to make a star block. So what we're gonna be doing is first making flying geese and then I'll show you how to put them together to make a strip of flying geese like this to use as spacers. And then we'll also show you how to use the flying geese to make a star block. I have more information about this on my blog. Previously to me doing videos, um, I was only a blogger. And now I have the blog and I have videos. And so I have covered all of this in my on my blog years ago when I was making one of these quilts at a previous time. I think I was actually making the quilt before this. I think I was making my grandson Carver's quilt when I did that. And so I did video, I took pictures and I have like more of a written tutorial. So if that's more your speed, I'll put a link below to where you can find out more information on my blog on how I make the crumb quilts. And some people, it's great for some people because some people like to read and look at it and see pictures and study a picture. Some people like a video. So that's why I expanded to do this in video format because so many people have been excited and wanting to know how I did it and they prefer video format. So as long as you let me know what you're looking for, I really do try to provide and do some of the things as I can. I can't do everything <laughs> that is requested, but I try to do quite a few of the things. So the main thing that we're gonna be needing today to make flying geese is a rectangle and triangles. And so when I cut my rectangles, I, I'm wanting for this project for my flying geese to have red in the center because I think it looks like a great accent. So I have a strip of fabric here and to make flying geese, remember we don't do anything at a cutting table and we don't use a rotary cutter. We just cut as we go. So I'm just gonna, the ones I'm making here are probably, I guess, I'm guessing about an inch and three quarters by an inch and a half, maybe? I don't know, I just take and guess, and none of them are the same. You can just see I just hold the fabric and cut, and that's what I get is what I get. And some are deeper and some are smaller. Um, you can see that when you look at the strip of flying geese, maybe this will help you see it better. I hold it up here. You can see that the geese are all kind of wonky. Like the third one up here from the bottom, that one's a little bit smaller. And uh, they'll be just fine. I've done this lots of times and some of the geese have like their little tip cut off. It doesn't matter. That just makes more, um, more wonkiness. And if you look at my quilt and you like my quilt, then my quilt is wonky, so it's totally okay if yours is wonky too. You can do this a little bit more precisely if you like to, but I like to add the wonkiness because then it makes me not have to worry about being perfect. So here we go with, we, I've got a stack here of rectangles, and then previous to this, I cut some triangles, and I'm gonna show you how I do that. So I take a strip or a piece of, 
Oh, here, here's a piece. I take a piece of fabric like this. For me, I fold it in half. And this is probably about an inch and a half, maybe maybe wider than that, probably almost two inches wide. And I just cut so that I have about two inches wide again. And then I cut corner to corner. And so then I have triangles like this. So I'm just gonna do that. Um, it doesn't really matter if they're a perfect triangle or not. Because again, it all just adds to the wonkiness. So what's gonna happen is, if you wanna cut squares on there, you can. I just cut triangles because it saves fabric. So I'm laying this on here like this. And so I have the little rectangle down like this. And so it's hamburger size, so it's a hamburger waist so that it's flatter. And I'm gonna lay this on here, making sure that this overlaps and I'm gonna sew from here down over to here. And I'm gonna just run a few through the sewing machine that way. I just always make sure that the mm, tail, I think I'll call it, the tail of the triangle hangs off the side of the rectangle. I hope that makes sense. I wish I had a fancy camera that would, that I could switch angles from you seeing me this way to you seeing me overhead like this, because right now I feel like you seeing overhead might be helpful. So I ran about, I don't know, this is my fifth one. I'll run another two under there. And then I'll show you what we do next. These happen to all have this white background with the green stripe. I'm gonna run this through. Okay, so my piece looks like this now. Okay, so we're gonna trim this little red corner off. That red corner is gonna get trimmed off. So if you've made any flying geese in the past, um, it's pretty much similar to that. I'm gonna get these all cut and then we'll get them all ironed. Okay, I just iron to the triangle. Just iron away from the rectangle. Okay, I've got to move a few things around here. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna show you a couple of them now. See how wonky they look right now? Super wonky. And that's okay. We're just gonna take our scissors and we're just gonna, we're not even gonna cut yet. I'll show you what we do later. I'm gonna finish ironing these and then we're gonna put the other triangle on them all to get the flying geese block made. I've always wondered, if you only make one, is it a flying goose or is it still a flying geese? <laughs> I don't know, some things I think about when I'm sitting at the sewing machine. I just love sitting at the sewing machine because for me, it's just pretty stress-free and sewing on a quilt like this is especially stress-free because anything goes and if it doesn't look perfect, there's a trash can right there and I can throw it right in there. And being I'm just mating, making it out of tiny scraps that most people would probably throw away, um, doesn't make me feel bad if I end up needing to throw something away. I am mixing it up and using different background prints. So some have the green stripe and some don't have the green stripe. I sent one through that just has a blue plaid. And you can do it however you want. If you want them to all be the same, you can. If you're like me and don't care, just do you and don't care. So. Okay, 
that got our, those through the machine. Now the next thing, I'm gonna trim them apart. And now they look pretty crazy again. I'll take a couple of them off. So you can see that this red corner piece over here, this is where we're gonna be cutting off. We laid the triangle on, I sewed from corner to corner, and then this part is being trimmed off. And then we'll iron that. Okay, here we go. Got a couple more to do yet. And then we'll head to the iron. I really enjoy having this machine in a cabinet and having the fold out so that I can have the ironing mat here and I have enough room on that side to have a garbage can and a can of pop easily enough without um, worrying about room and space. I really appreciate that. My other machine that's over here um, is tabletop, so I don't have quite the same luxury. So you can see that I'm gonna lay them all out on here, and you can see that they all look pretty wonky. You can see that they all just are a little awkward. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna trim them with, just with my scissors. You can see like this one, that needs to be straightened off. Um, you can see this down here, that needs to be straightened off. We're just gonna make them um, a little bit more uniform, but not too much. Okay, just with the scissors, we're just gonna cut and cut. However many cuts you need to make it, um, what you need is just fine. I've kind of joked or said in early, earlier videos that I really enjoy this technique because I don't end up at a cutting table. That doesn't mean I don't cut. It just means like I'm cutting here at the machine more than I'm actually sitting down to only cut. Okay. Now I'm gonna tell you a couple more things here. Right now, if I sew these together, because the background fabrics overlapped, my the distance between the triangles is gonna be pretty big. It's gonna be bigger. Yes, some of this is gonna get lost in the seam allowance, and so you might wanna do that, but you might want to trim some of these a little bit closer. Um, it doesn't really matter either way. You can see that there's my finished one, and we'll sew these together just like this, and we'll get another finished strip. Some of the seams aren't gonna, being we just eyeballed these and cut these with a scissor, we didn't, um, there's no guarantee that the pieces are the exact same width, but they're within, probably an eighth of an inch or so. And so we're just gonna go with that. We can always trim more later. Uh, you can see here, if I line this up, you can see that the one in the background is wider than the one in the foreground. And so that's, it's it will all work out because once we start sewing pieces together, we don't have to go by the rule of having a fourth inch seam allowance. We can sew a little deeper and we can have a 3 eighths of an inseam allowance and then that will accommodate some of that. Okay, here we go. We're gonna sew the twosies to the other twosies. And run that through. And we're gonna sew this so I have four together now, and I have two more together here, and so we're just gonna add those to that. Then we'll put my little nest through there. 
and this is our strip. I'm going to iron it and then we'll have our first spacer done for the quilt. Okay, here it is all finished. So you can see that they're all wonky and they're all a little bit different and that's totally fine. You can see some of the backgrounds have that white with the green stripes. Some of them don't. It's perfectly fine. They don't have to all be the same. And in the quilt, these both are going to be in the quilt. You don't have to have only six in a set. Here's a set I only have four in. Um, it can be however many that you want. I always start out and I just sew... Uh, just a bunch of these. Sometimes I'll add two fours together and get eight together. It's just whatever I need as a spacer. Sometimes as a spacer, I might just add another piece of background fabric and another piece of background fabric down here. It can be any way that you want it to be. And so for right now, I just recommend you could easily make a hundred of these flying geese because you'll be able to use them in the quilt somehow. So you can... Take that as an assignment if you want, or if you can just make 50 at first, see if that's that's enough for you. But just in the little bit that I have right here, I have four plus seven, so that'd be 11, 17, 17 and eight is 25. So I've always, just in this little bit right here, I've already have 25 little flying geese used up just here. So that's why I say that you could easily make 100 and fit 100 into the quilt. Because again, just in this section here that I showed you, just using spacers, um, we have five plus two plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so five plus two plus eight, so it looks like we have about 15 there, just in this little section. And that doesn't even count putting any in the inside of the quilt. So if you wanna sew ahead in between while I'm making videos, you can easily make 100 little flying geese and we'll find use for them in the quilt. So next up, um, I wanna show you how to make a star block. So really, if you look at it, a star block is just, one big center, two smaller pieces on, or four smaller pieces on the side, one in each corner, and four flying geese, because this is a flying goose, this is a flying goose, this is a flying goose, and this is a flying goose. I'll just hold that up so you can get a better look. You can see my star is pretty wonky. I don't know if I have another one here or not. To show you one that's maybe, oh, here's another one. I kind of made these two ahead of time. Um, when I made these, I um, did it oppositely. I had a white background and used red triangles to make the flying geese pieces. So we'll see what we do today. I have a whole bunch of those already prepped over here, knowing that at some point I'm going to need to make more stars because I sewed those together for a little while while we were piecing the alphabet letters. So to make this, what we're going to do is we need to find some fabric first off. Um, what do we have here? Oh, here's a piece of blue. Uh, that looks like that what could make about, well, we'll trim that off. That looks like it could, there's enough for three there. What else do I have? Do I have anything else that, that's that wide? Because, again, I told you sometimes I use pieces that are the same and sometimes I use pieces that are different. So I have a square here. I'm going to cut these down. I think I'll use these pieces for the corners. So there's four corners. And now I need pieces for the flying geese. I'm actually... Hmm. I think I'm going to, yeah, I'll find one more that's this size. I can just cut that off here. So this time I have some, we'll be making another one that has a white background 
like these have a white background and a red star. So we're gonna start out. So we have four of these. I actually think I'm gonna do something else. We'll just wait. I'll explain it to you as I go. Um, I think I'm gonna put a, make the center square be um, white too and just red points. Okay, so I have a center square. I have four corner squares and I have four squares that we're gonna turn into flying geese and they will be the points of the star. So I also have a stack over here of red triangles. So we're going to take the these and we're gonna put points on there kind of like this. And to do that, we're gonna flip this over like this and we're gonna sew from here over to here. I'm gonna do that with all four of the pieces. Okay, here we go, we got two done. have four done and I'm gonna trim this and then take those off and I'll show you what they look like okay so it looks like this now I'll take that one off there so you're not confused or what to look at so it looks like this right now and we're gonna trim the white corner off just like we did when we were making the other flying geese okay so all the white corners get trimmed off on all four of the pieces. And these are, as we are making the points for the star, I'm gonna iron that out towards the red or towards the triangle, because sometimes when we make star blocks, they will be red. And sometimes as we get going in the quilt, some of the star blocks, like you can see here, this star block has well, maybe you can see there. It has a red star with a yellow background. This one has a white star with a red background. Um, this is a red star with a white points. They're all different in the quilt. And so it doesn't matter whatever you make is it'll get used in the quilt. So now we're, we have all of the pieces look like this and we're gonna put a corner right here and we're gonna sew from here over to there. And then we'll trim off that white point of the star just like we did for the other blocks. Oh, I was missing one. It was over on the ironing board. It's a rainy day here in Northeast Iowa. It's early November. If I had to guess, I'd say it's the fourth as I'm filming this. So we have the four pieces of these sewn of the star points and we're gonna cut this off right here. I don't have any big plans today except I was gonna try to film videos and um, hopefully as they load, we'll get them released because I know so many of you are anxious to see the next steps in making this quilt. And I myself am anxious to get the quilt done. So it's a good plan that it's a good thing that both of us or all of us are on the same plan that we'd like to see more videos and we'd like to get the quilt finished. So I'm curious to know how many of you are sewing along with me. I'd love for you to leave a comment and let me know. You can see that these are kind of wonky now. So I'm gonna take the scissors and you know, there's excess here and there's excess here. I'm gonna take the scissors and just square them up a little bit. And they're just, when I say square it up, it just means eyeball square it up. Nothing more than that. And
I think people are always amazed when they do this for the first time because we're so told that, you know, seam allowances have to be a fourth inch. Cutting is so important. You must be so precise when you cut. And then you see me here with just the scissors cutting at the machine. And I have just thrown all of those <laughs> concepts out the door because I'm just wonkily cutting with my scissors. I wonder if wonkily is a word. Um, I'm just cutting with my scissors and paying no mind to really size or anything else. I'm just eyeballing everything. So I think it's always people are initially shocked when they make their first block to see that um, they actually do come together. So here's what we're working on for the block. You can see how a star block is coming out. These were our flying geese pieces. And these are the corner pieces all in the corner and this is the center piece that we'll have for our block. So now we're just gonna construct it just like we would a nine patch block. And um, so we're gonna sew this into a row, this into a row, and then this into a row, and then we'll sew the rows together. So I'll start working on that. And um, the important thing to remember when you're sewing these together, especially the outside pieces, is to try to make sure that if there's excess, that the excess goes to what is gonna be the outside of the block. Okay, I've got those all through the first time. Um, I'm not gonna bother ironing them right now. I'll show you what we have. So you got an idea. Okay, when I was saying that if there's excess to leave it to the outside of the block, I was referring to here because we want this to be a straight line along here. And so if there's excess, if I cut the corner square too big, that goes to the outside and we'll trim that up later. So now we're going to add these to what we already have sewn. Okay, you can see again, I'm not too picky about how things are sewn. They just kind of go through and we'll worry about trimming later. And I'm going to warn you in advance, these seams aren't going to line up. They, they just don't and they won't because everything was just cut with the scissors by hand. And that's totally okay. They aren't meant necessarily to line up. Um, you can see in a star block I made here, you can see this doesn't line up. This doesn't come to a nice intersection like we're used to making. We just ignore all of the things that we learned before about matching seams because we're not worried about matching seams at all. We're just putting a block together and it's totally fine if it's wonky and different. Um, there's no like right or wrong way anymore to, to iron your seam allowances because that too got thrown out the door because the seams aren't going to match anyway so they don't have to nest. It's not a big deal at all. This is going to be a seam heavy quilt just because everything is small so we'll just know that when it comes time to quilt it that it's gonna be a seam heavy quilt. Okay, so this is what we have right now. You can see that I'm not even bothering at this point to trim anything up. We'll trim it when the block is all together. So now we have this is a row, this is a row, this is a row, and we're gonna sew those rows together. So I'm gonna start with here. I want to take a second here and show you this if I can. You see how the, the two pieces, uh, the two strips weren't even lined up and because everything's wonky, you're going to have a weird seam allowance that some of that just sticks out and that's totally normal, totally fine. We're not even going to bother ironing at this point. We're just going to add the other strip on. Now 
okay. Let me get this one ironed. I'm actually going to give this one a little shot of spray starch just so it'll lay down on the board a little better so you can see it. Okay, so here's our wonky star block right now. Um, you can see how it needs some squaring up. You can save these and do that all at the um, cutting board or you can just be like me and just cut like this and call it good enough because this really will be good enough for when you put it in the quilt because as I said earlier um, your seam allowances and the seams don't need to match up perfectly or anything like that and it's really hard to get them to match up and I don't even bother worrying about it. Oops, a little bit off here. So there we have it. We have our first little star block for the quilt. Um, you can go on and change it up so that your background is um, different colors. You don't have to have all of them be red. I don't even encourage you for all of them to be red. Uh, you can have yellow background with a red star. You can have a red background with a yellow star. You can do whatever you like to make them. And um, I think I could even suggest to you, you could probably make about 25 stars and be pretty, pretty safe that we can find a spot for all of them in the quilt. Uh, I would vary the sizes if you can. Make some like small, make some medium and some bigger. Um, it just adds more interest to the quilt if everything's not the same size. Uh, I think that's... What I have to share with you today, I showed you how to make the flying geese. Uh, I think this is the strip that we made. And I showed you how to make a star. You'll have to leave a comment in the section, in the comment section to let me know if you want me to go through the process of making a star with a different background or if you're comfortable just going on and varying the colors as as you want to yourself or if you want me to show you specifically how to do that. I think you can get it just from watching this video but I have no idea what your uh, level is of confidence and as I said before you can always pitch anything that you don't like in the garbage because well um, it's just tiny scraps that probably would have been thrown away anyway. So I'm getting really excited we're getting to the really fun part. Uh, next time I think we're gonna go through and we're gonna learn how to do a churn dash quilt, a churn dash block, and I'll probably come up with a couple other blocks that we can do as well. So I'm so happy that you were able to join me here in the sewing room as we make our way through making uh, freeform baby quilts. And uh, I think it's a lot of fun. I hope you do too. I would appreciate it if you gave me a thumbs up or um, somehow left a comment to let me know that you're enjoying the videos because you telling me that really encourages me to want to make more videos because I know that they're appreciated. So I'll catch you at another time. And uh, this was Joe live from the sewing room. I'll see you later. Bye.